Lulu, what do you have to say to the subscribers? Are you excited? Good morning YouTube. So in this video, I'm going to do an overview on my green car. Pablo posted in the video, <laughs> kind of, you know, asking me to finish it or get working on it. He asked you guys to comment. He asked you guys to like and subscribe. He asked you guys to join the channel uh, to see me finish my green car. So let's do a very simple overview of my green car. My green car is a 96 Honda Accord. I've owned this car for six or seven years. Um, when I originally bought this car, it had a JDM F22B dual overhead cam non-V. If you don't know what that is, it's a JDM Accord motor. It's basically a, a H23, but a Japanese version using a single cam style block. Um, they're pretty rare motors. I actually still have one, um, but I'll get to that later. So the car had a JDM F22B, had a single cam, I think A6 or, or B1 training in it, which if you don't know what that is, it's a single cam VTEC 94 through 97 Accord training. Um, a lot of people aren't going to believe that I'm strictly an F-Series guy. Um, you're going to see my channel, you're going to see the, the, the DA, and you're going to think, oh, well, this, you know, this guy's just learning about B-Series. Uh, I've been building F-Series Accords for probably 10 years since I got my first Accord. I think I got my first Accord when I was 17 or 18. I'm 28 now. You know, um, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I've probably done a total of 25 to 30 F-Series builds. I've never tried to do anything too crazy with them, but I've literally experimented with everything. Uh, super ported heads, super high compression, cam setups, this and that, whatever you can think of, I've done it, tried it, learned from it. I'm super into detailed learning things. Like, I like to know exact cam specs, you know, lash on the motor, piston a rod, you know, your, your piston to bore, like, everything. I'm just super into the motor side of things. If it's something mechanical, it interests me. Um, but back to my Accord. Um the Accord had an F22B when I bought it. That motor smoked. It was horrible. I dynoed the motor just to see what it made, and it made 141 horsepower. It was horribly slow. I I raced it. I believe it went 15.8 or 16.0 or something like that. Horribly slow, whatever. Was when I first bought the car, I wasn't really worried about how fast it was. It had a like a Tanabe Super Medallion exhaust on it. Yada, yada, yada. A bunch of, you know, mismatched parts. Um, so what I've done to this car over the years has been crazy. I've, in this car alone, I've had, I think, eight motors. Uh, not every build I remember 100% because it's been years and years of doing it. But the current build I have in the car is what everybody wants me to see, you know, see me finish. Um, the car is caged. The car has front-facing turbo setup. The uh, motor that's in the car is a 12 and a half to one G22. If you don't know what that is, it's a Frankenstein F series block with an H series head. The head that's on the car is uh, Fiora 6,000 valves, BC springs and retainers, Pro One cams. The pistons are uh, Aries 12 and a half to one for an F22. The head's been cut. The rods are Panther I-beams. Uh, the crank's been rebalanced and micro-polished. The block setup should be good for six or 700. The only weak point on this motor is the sleeves. It's on an OEM 86 millimeter sleeve. If you don't know, H and F series or F series have cast iron sleeves. H series have FRM sleeves. It's the fiberglass reinforced sleeves. Both of them are very strong. Don't let people talk to you bad about an H series or something like that. 
those motors can hold six, 700 horsepower, just like an F series can. Um, they, there's nothing to talk bad about an H series. H series are going to come back sooner or later. People love them. The people that are in the H and F series are really in H and F series. Like I said, I've done probably 30 builds. I've done K pistons, uh, G22, G23s. I destroked an F22. I did all that. I've, I've tried everything. Busy moto built heads, uh, uh, what is it, Bullfrog or whatever, some old school um, cam setups, uh, like the 2-2 racing where they cut out the whole top of the intake manifold. Uh, I did ITB setup. I've tried almost every header there is, Tri-Y, Logic, uh, Long Tubes, the Big Tube, um, what is it, Vibrant Tri-Y. I did an RMF style on a single cam and on a dual cam. Uh, I, I've tried all everything there is with the H and F series, um, but back to the green car after the motor, I have a T two T four Euro Trans. I have a competition twin disc in it. The car itself has traction bars. I have CL rotor over hub front brake conversion. If you don't know what that is, Google it. I have Prelude rear brake upgrade. I have custom control arms from Fat4 Customs. They did a group buy for custom sets that they didn't produce on their website. And then they started producing them uh, just to see if there was interest. My turbo manifold, my intercooler, my intercooler piping, my up pipe, my cage, and everything was custom built by a friend of mine that has his own shop. Uh, I'll put a link down in the bottom to his shop. He might be known recently for building the twin turbo Civic, the green one that has twin turbonetics or whatever aiming at each other with exhaust comes into one. That's the guy that did my fab work. Fab work is amazing. I've never had issues with anything he's did. He's done work on pretty much all of my cars. Um, my fuel setup is uh, dual Bosch 44s. I have a custom tank that he built for me. That's a five gallon tank. Uh, my dual 44s are AN 6 or 8 feet. I always get that all mixed up with the AN stuff. No, big numbers or small, small numbers are big, whatever. Um, I have an Aeromotive A1, A2000 regulator. I have 2200 injectors for it. I do have a K to H setup. If you don't know what that is, I have a RBC off of a 8th Gen SI or a RSX Type S on my H slash f series whatever g22 on oh, my g22 i'll just call it a g22 from now on it, people get upset when you call it g22 because honda has a g series motor but no it's not the same thing uh it's a frankenstein so i also have two other motors for the car i have a actually three other motors i have an f20b on the engine stand that sets in my garage that's basically a full parts motor uh i could put it together it could be a running motor not really worried about it i have a de-stroked F22B. The JDM motor that came in the car, I have a D stroke one of those using an H series crank using F20B pistons with my old F22B built head I had. Uh, one of the builds I did was a turbo build that I personally didn't build. I bought it and fixed it and I had it in my daily driven CB7 before I built the motor that I'm using now in my green car. Uh, if you guys ever get confused about any of my builds, I've done a lot of them, so I don't. I even get confused. I forget sometimes what rods or what in what motor or whatever. Uh, my third spare motor is actually a piston rod head motor. Um, it has a fully ported head. It has a busy moto long rod setup. KS tune balance shaft elite. I also have that in the motor that's in my car. Um, pretty much anything you can do to an Accord, I've probably had of it or done it. My car is also JDM front and rear. I have dual rear fogs. I have intersections. I used to run JDM front fogs before I did my turbo setup. Now my turbo sticks out of my front bumper. I'm the, as I know now, the only full frontward facing Accord. Like my turbo sticks through the front of the car. I have a velocity stack that sticks through the front bumper. My intercooler is in the front bumper. There is no piping between my turbo and my intercooler. They are V-band together. There is no loss in any air. There's no leaks, no nothing, because there is no couplers between my basic hot side of my turbo to my intercooler. They're, they're bolted together. Um, yes, I'll finish the car. Um, me personally, 
I don't get in a rush with this car. I've had this car for so long and I've done so many builds on it. I kind of want this to be my last, I don't want to say hurrah, but I kind of want it to be my last build that I do. And then it lasts. I want it to actually stay together. The motor, I'm not really too concerned about, but everything else on the car, I, I kind of made sure I spent money where it needed to be spent. Uh, a lot of people don't like actually tallying up how much money they've spent on one of their project cars, especially a car they've had for six years. Uh, to be honest, I've probably spent $25,000, $30,000 on this car because I've had so many motors on the car. I've had so many transmissions. I've tried H23 trans, F22 trans with gear sets. I've done LSD setups. I uh, did, I think, H22 trans uh, uh, M2B4, which is like the H22 LSD trans. Then I had a T2W4 and a T2T4. The motor, the trans that's in it now is a T2T4 that had just been rebuilt that I bought from a friend that had a cord that he was racing. Uh, I got a clutch setup and everything from him. And uh, I got it for a decent price for being a freshly rebuilt trans. You know, so H&F parts are, are kind of a niche market, I guess you would say. They're really coming back. A lot of, a lot of HDB setups are, are coming back around. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it now. They've, there's been a lot of technology put into it. You know, you can do plateless where you don't have to mess with all the mounts and alignments. You still have to notch the block a little bit, whatever. Um, never really been into that. Never really been into with my H and F stuff, throwing them in civics. Uh, but I have a good friend of mine that literally took his H22 out of his Accord. That was really healthy, like really healthy. The car trapped 101 or something like that. He took that motor out of his Accord, his you know, a cord that he had for like six years, put it in a hatchback and that car runs 11s, like straight off the trailer on slicks, runs 11s. It went 14s in his Accord. That tells you right there, power to weight is everything. That's why with my Accord, my green car, it's going to probably, I don't know, make 600 without much effort. It has compression, it has cams. I might have to put a bigger turbo on it. The The turbo is a T3 twin scroll back housing. It's a dual ball bearing turbo. So it's going to spool really fast. But I'm more into the mid-range type of power. I like consistent power band. I like power under the curve. If you know, A lot of people don't understand what that means. But you can Google it. Uh, you know, Even my Juke. My Juke's the same way. I, I like power under the curve. You, I can turn my car up a lot more. You don't need to. I, I like to learn the car. You can see the car's not cut. I have all the metal in the car still. I don't plan on cutting this car. I have all glass windows. I actually plan on putting some of the interior pieces back in. So if I ever want to run like the street, street, uh, pro street class or street outlaw class, whatever, not the front, not street front wheel drive because the car is way too heavy. It'll never be competitive in that. And it's not really, you know, I'm never going to try to be competitive in street front wheel drive. That, that's that's just a bunch of sponsors and too much money. Not really, you know, my thing. I'm sure if I ever got a bunch of sponsors, sure, I'd build a car for it, but it wouldn't be in an Accord. An Accord's not meant to do that. You know, you, you see, like, Shane. Shane has his hatch. His hatch could do straight front-wheel drive. If he, you know, changed a few things on that car, it could do straight front-wheel drive. Pablo's Integra, that's my boy. Shane's my boy. Pablo's Integra, street front-wheel drive ready, no problem. We put a sleeve block in that car. We turn, we put a, a, what is it, 72 mil for that class. We put a, a sleeve block in that car and a 72 mil. We turn that bad boy up to 30, 40 pounds like most of the street front wheel drive guys run. They run up 50, 60 pounds of boost. And we make 11, 12, 1400 horsepower like they do on race gas. No problem. Weight plated, set up, cars light, 2000 pounds, yada, yada, yada. I think with his weight plate and everything, his 10 point cage and all, the car gained 80 pounds, 60 pounds, something like that. That car is light. It only weighs 2,800 pounds. You've seen it in his corner scale video, and it's 70-30. They do need to move a little weight around. He needs to put a little weight on the passenger rear tire to make the car really even. But you know what it is, what it is. You have to learn. You have to go. You have to build. You have to continually grow. Um, I'm not going to get too in-depth on this channel, or in this channel. I'm not going to get too in-depth on this video about you know anything too crazy about my car. I'm going to have a few clips. I'm going to throw them in here of the Turbo, the K to H. I have a full Roscoe Racing URR manifold I might try out as well. Um, like I said with the DA video, I like to test things. I like to learn. If you have any 
you know, things you would like to see me test or just simple tricks or hacks that you know, not only in the Honda community, just in general with cars, let me know. I, I'll, I'll test it. I'll see what it does. You know, my, I might not make a video on it, but I love to learn new things. Uh, if that's one thing you guys will learn about me, I'm always down for experimenting. I'm always down for doing something, you know, people say can't be done. Uh, like I said, I did a build with an F22 using F20B pistons. I reused every part in that motor. I literally spent like $64 and that was gaskets and oil. And that's what I put together a motor with. And that motor made like 180 horsepower. I love that motor. I used to spray like a 75 shot through, reused head studs, reused head gaskets that I copper sprayed with stuff I had laying around the house. And I think on a 60 shot, I made 240 horsepower. And that was one of my favorite motors ever because I would rev that thing, no valve springs or retainer, stock head to like 8,400 RPMs with a cam. And it loved it. It sounded like it was flying apart. It never flew apart. The only reason I had to take that motor out of the car is because it ate the thrust bearings off the crank. I, I Either, you know, the clearances were too loose or the stage five clutch I had in it because I knew I was going to beat it uh, finally took its toll on something. But... That'll be it for this morning. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the green car, if you have any questions about my DA, if you have any questions about the juke, uh, let me know in the comment section below. As always, press the bell icon, get notifications, like and subscribe. Tell me what you want to see on my channel. Uh, like I said, I, 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 I'm always open to questions. If you have my Instagram, it's Yosbuilt. If I don't follow you back, my Instagram does weird things sometimes and I hit follow and it doesn't follow people whatever inbox me i'll hit follow again to see if it works um if you have me on facebook add me whatever i'll i'll add you I, I have no problems talking to anybody if you have questions about anything h or f related i pretty much know everything i've done every build there is uh i've helped out with every every type of build for h and f uh, we have nitrous h hatches uh shane's build you'll see me in his videos uh he doesn't really post much we're gonna get shane to post more because Shane needs to get the post in and get some subscribers and followers as well. Um, so if you haven't checked out his, it should be Froman Productions. Check him out. I'll put a link in the description below. You should already know SB Tuning. That's where you've seen me and Shane the most. And of course, Pablo. Pablo's been doing it for years. Um, but have a good night. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the content for the green car. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Put it in the comment section below. Whatever you want to see on the channel, let me know. If you want to see me do some stuff to the DA, you want me to try stuff with the DA, let me know. And uh, I'll try to accommodate what I can. Have a good night. Until next time.